Hello and welcome back everybody to another, oh, all the mods from the Acrylic Subserver. Lots of beautiful people online again tonight, uh, having tons of amazing conversation, you name it. Just doing all the crazy things. And I'd like to introduce you to the newest member of our family. Please say hello to Wormy. Yes, indeed. Little Wormy here. Does wonderful work in the garden. Um, he is currently hydrating and sometimes fertilizing our crops for us he is the hardest working worm in the industry and i just so happened to get him a mate here and i wanted to uh wanted to just get the mate down and see uh stop it stop it stop it stop it planter 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 quit it hey hey planter seriously how many seeds do you have down there Holy cow. You got lots of seeds. All right. There we go. Uh, mm -hmm, pl plant. And, oh, I can't place a mate for him. Okay. What about right here? Can we place? Oh, there we go. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So, basically, these worms, let's first explain uh, what exactly happens here and how you get them. You get worms by simply tilling grass and the ground and they are part of actually additions there and they're just little worms that you can plant and they fill a three by three area and they will just circle around like so and they work to fertilize and they work to you know do some of those types of awesome things for your you know your harvest your crops all that kind of stuff highly recommend getting a few worms working for you because it's so easy you just put them down and away you go and you know what we're going to be doing that a lot this episode we are going to be putting down things and letting them work but before we do that we need to get into a little bit further with tinker's construct Yes, indeed, we are going to work and get our smeltery. So I went ahead and got the sand, clay, and gravel that I require right here to get some grout. Uh, this is kind of the first step towards, you know, getting things done. Luckily, we can throw it in our smelting factory. Um, we do have two energy upgrades and the two speed upgrades in there, so it's going quite nicely. And I switched this over to RF per tick. So right now it's using about 106 RF per tick is basically how it's going. Um, I also switched these guys over, so they are actually outputting 280 RF per tick. Uh, per one. So what do we have there? 560 in these two bio generators RF per tick. But these things, uh, they use a decent amount. They use a decent amount of power to operate. So you're going to need decent power generation. And I mean, these bio generators are going to be our bread and butter to start with here. A lot of the other people on the server are going with wind turbines and solar panels and stuff like that. And I agree 100%. They are amazing. Not so great when you're in a cave, though. Underground. So that's one of our problems. Now, I could run a line probably up to the top of the mountain that we're under and set up a few windmills and solar panels and all that kind of stuff. But uh, where's the fun in that? Let's have a little bit more of a challenge in front of us. But anyways, let's get our smeltery controller. Let's get our... We need nine, so that's seven of them so far uh-huh there we go that'll be our nine for the base because i'm doing a standard three by three or what i believe should be standard three by three smeltery and i've already hollowed out the little hillside there that i mentioned last episode that i felt just was a good spot overall for a smeltery for whatever reason i don't know why i just feel like it's going to be good there it can kind of be tucked in and yeah i don't know i like it i like it a lot um we also need a piece of glass to get our seared tank uh this guy is required to store the lava that the smeltery is going to operate on all right, pretty straightforward there. We're also going to need a drain. I think I'm only going to go with one drain and one faucet at this point in time for this setup. And because the, the changes that have been made to Tinker's Construct are changes that I'm not a huge fan of, actually. And uh, 
I won't be using this for resource processing because we already have resource processing. So we're only going to basically need to pour in exactly whatever it is we're making, correct? So we don't really need to get too carried away there. Um, other than that, I need to get a little bit more of the seared brick just to fill in the sides while I continually harvest my food and make it into juice because why not, right? Juice is wonderful. All right, so we need a few of these. Uh, I think we need nine of them, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty sure we need nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We do need nine. See, I was bang on. Bang on. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so many good things. So many good things in this pack. Oh, we've been talking about it. It's good. It's good stuff. All right. Here we go. Still producing a little bit more grout. That's fine. We'll go with this. Perfect. We're going to need... You know what? No. Let's do the casting table first. Um, this guy here is what the drain and faucet is going to pour into. All right. So once we place this guy down, the smeltery kind of lights up and it's going, okay, you can use me now. And that is perfect. So we have the casting table. And I think the other thing, we probably should still get a basin. I think there's still some nice recipes uh, that we can use a basin for. So we should probably do that as well. Uh, get the quick little basin here. But I'm probably going to be more switching them out as necessary instead of having one for each one. Good night. Um, so that'll work good. There's our smeltery set up. Now we need to get the lava over here and piped in to the lava tank to get this thing operational. Uh, in the meantime, what I want to do down here is I want to actually get an infinite water source. We don't really have one down here, so let's, let's make one. And let's make a pretty big one. We're going to make a pond. Um, why not? Right? Right here. It's probably going to get in the way of everything. And it's probably going to frustrate me, but that's okay. We're building a pond. We are building a pond. Beautiful. I love it. And then all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lower out the middle here. Just one deeper. And we're going to use this pretty soon here for something uh, kind of sort of cool and important. A mod I've never used before. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be, I think, pretty awesome. Um, okay, good. Let's drink some apple juice. Perfect. And, oh, man, I do that all the time. It is so annoying. So frustrating. All right, good. Yeah, beautiful pond of water. Beautiful. Love it. All right, and we're going to throw the lava in like so. And now we are at least ready to smelt. Um, I also want to get all of our Tinker's stuff over here. So that we're not running back and forth the whole time. So let's get our table and all of this. The stuff that we just put here. And relocate it all the way over to the Tinker setup. Now, what I'm thinking actually. You know what? Let's get a little decorative here um, at this point. Because I want to have it. I want to have it where it is. But I want it to still kind of look good you know what i mean so what i'm thinking is let's try a few of these and see what they look like we're gonna go with some half slabs and i just want to kind of see i haven't really played a long around with these very much so i want to see what they look like and how they're going to blend in so what i'm thinking is we could do like a little mini dock here off the side Mm-hmm. Kind of like so. And then maybe we could actually do catwalks around the pond. Something like that. So that the pond's not quite as big, but it's still going to be functional for what we need. I don't know. I don't mind that at all. Um, I think that that's going to be okay. The red underneath, when I hit F7 for the lighting... Things aren't actually going to spawn there because they can't. Um, but I think that this is going to actually... It's dark. Like, it's really dark. But 
I think it's going to be okay. And it kind of adds a little bit to the smeltery. Those are actually very similar in color, which is kind of cool, in my opinion. Um, if you ask me, you know, I think it's pretty cool. So we got that going. We got that good. Okay. Next, we need to... Hmm. Let's place down the Tinker's stuff. All right. So what we're going to want is I'm going to want my tool station smack dab in the middle here right like so and we're going to want a crafting station probably pretty much right beside it and right in here is a perfect spot for the pattern chest then the part table and the stencil table hmm you know what yeah i'm just going to remove that oh maybe oh that was a bit of lag that was a lot of lag what happened there and where did my stencil table go uh, there it is. Found it. All right. And the stencil table. Okay, good. Now we're kind of at the point here where we need to get the casting for the metal from the smeltery. But before we do that, apparently somebody from the server has left me a present upstairs and they're pretty adamant that I go check it out. Um, now, one of the things about presents, okay, and I want to bring this up right here with everybody, you know, potential people that are joining, potential people, and the people that are on the server, etc. Okay, I love presents. Don't get me wrong. I think that's exactly what this server is about. And I know a lot of people have been getting their presence and you know and working together as a team and all that kind of stuff and that is awesome that is exactly what i wanted the server to be a way to grow the community make new friends that share common interests etc you know that's one of those things but when it comes to presence for me it's a little bit of a tough situation and the reason it's a tough situation is I don't want to be pushed ahead of where I should be because there are people that follow along in my videos with their own playthrough. They might be playing all the mods right now. They might be, you know, just around the same point I am of getting a smeltery up and running because people do tend to follow along. So if all of a sudden I get this super overpowered item that I have no place uh, having yet... Well, it kind of ruins that progression, correct? Kind of does, in my opinion. So, uh, that's one of the things. So, I did already look at this present over there, and I gauged when I felt it would be a good time. And the present was given to me by Reed. And uh, let's... Oh, boy. There's a few mobs out there. I think we can kill them, though. I think we can kill them. We got the black armor on. I think we got it. We're the all blacks at the moment. We're, I think we got this. Um, but... This will not be breaking any progression or anything like that, which is great. And it's just going to kind of expand on it more than anything. All right, no mobs. Excellent. All right, so Reed built this beautiful arrow, might I say. Very talented arrow. Um, and left me a little present here. Bingo, just like that. And just a few little items. Got some lapis. Very cool. Got some slime balls. Mm, nice. Uh, we probably will have good access to a lot of those right there. A few actually addition seeds. We got some rice seeds. Some flax seeds. Oh, those might give us string. That would be cool. Um, let's see what else. We got beetroot seeds from Minecraft. Oh, nice. The one, one zero, or was that one... I don't know. 110, I think it was. A little bit of string. Uh, apple oak pollen from Forestry. Interesting. I don't know if I'm going to use that one. It's going to be a while before I can. And it gave us a pickaxe. Very nice indeed. Um, so, basically, we have... Okay, so it's fractured. So, that's a bone handle. Looks like it's a slime binding. Yeah. And is that a wooden head, I think? And it's been fortified with obsidian. Very nice. Thank you so much, Reed. I really do appreciate that. And I'm stealing the chest. <laughs> wow. What is going on tonight? 
Somebody is doing something. We got some TPS stuff. I'll have to look into that after this episode. Um, really wasn't too much of a concern. But thank you so much. I, I do appreciate the present. And I think now is the perfect time because we could actually make this pickaxe ourselves if we wanted to. Uh, as it's just a wooden head slime. We'd have to go get the slime up at the island. But uh, we could definitely do it. Alright, so that's one of the things there. And I think I'll meet you guys back downstairs. Alright, so we made it back down to the base, and little wormies are working fantastic. Mr. and Miss Worm are doing their thing. See, they just bone mealed that. You just saw it live. And, of course, it's helping our production quite a bit on the wheat, which is getting us more biofuel, which is getting us more RF, etc., etc. It's good stuff. Um, anyways, we have our smeltery up and running. We got our new pickaxe, and I wanted to explain a couple of the things here. One of the things is the fortified option with the obsidian. That is one of the items in this pickaxe that we haven't really discussed at all, and I'd like to go over it right now. Now, the way that this works is fortified is pretty straightforward. Um, we are going to need a tinker's pattern, blank patterns, and we're gonna need to put them in the stencil table. Stencil table, mm, we're still getting a little bit of that. Try to ser serve a restart and it's still no good. And this top left one here is called the sharpening kit. All right, so this is a pattern that you can make a very useful pattern that we're going to want to make a cast out of as well. Uh, there's quite a few other patterns as well that we're getting into now that I'd like to make. Hammerhead being one of them. Um, you know, the tough tool rods, all that kind of stuff. And the large plate is another terrific pattern. And those will just keep on going there. Um, we also need to get basically some stone in here. And I want to demonstrate the sharpening kit, all right? So you can combine it with stone in this, for example. And what it does is it kind of just enhances your tool, all right? So what that's doing is it basically upgrades your tool. So this tool here, because it's a wooden pickaxe head, it wouldn't have been able to mine cobalt, but with the fortified with obsidian, it now can mine cobalt, all right? So that's basically all that it's doing. So same thing with this stone that you see here with the sharpening kit. Um, combine it with a flint, and it upgrades your tool to the materials mining level. So that would bring it up to an iron level, all right? So if we take this guy out, like so, and we get our sharpening kit, perfect. And we can place it on our casting table. And then we need a little bit of gold. Yes, indeed. A little bit of gold is going to be required. I'm going to get a decent amount in there um, and throw it into the smeltery. It's going to melt up using some of that level. And uh, yeah, slowly but surely, we should see that thing, uh, the gold, be ready for us to harvest. All right. So then we can throw that back in there. Now, one of the things I do want to upgrade on this is the wooden pickaxe head. It's really cheap to repair, and that is great, but, but it is restricting us on a few other things. So what we can do is we can then get ourselves a pickaxe head, mm -hmm, just like so. Perfect. And we can make a cast out of that as well. Um, the bone uh, tool rod is not the best, but it's going to be fine for now. I actually wouldn't mind upgrading that to copper while we're at it. So I'm going to get a cast for that as well. All right. So uh, we have the gold melted, and now we can pour it over top of the sharpening kit that we have here. And it's going to take a little bit. It takes some progress. And... Bingo, we should be, why, why you no work? There we go. Oh, some more of that. Okay. And now we have the sharpening kit cast, which is very good. Now, the only problem with these guys is a simple one. And it's kind of annoying one, but uh, I mean, it is what it is. 
the thing is is they require a chest or their own pattern storage um, I'm just going to do a chest because there's really no point in making another one uh, so we're just gonna do a chest for our cast over here you can also do some of the things from like bibliocraft and stuff like that the bookshelves or anything like that if that is available to you um, but I think for right now I don't think that's an option now that used up two ingots of gold as well in, to make that cast so that's a thing so there we go down to four there yeah we're getting a decent amount of lag tonight which is not good not good at all i'm gonna have to do some serious detective work and figure out what's going on uh, but anyways there's our tool rod and our pickaxe as well so i mentioned that i wanted to do copper and you know what we could probably upgrade the pickaxe head to iron at this point we do have a decent amount of both uh, that's a one requirement and then a two requirement for the pickaxe head so we can quickly get those quite nicely um, in this system but i do want to make one more uh, pattern here because we can while we have the gold in the system so i'm going to make one more cast and from there we should be good to go all right so the copper is done so let's pour that into the tool rod that'll harden up nicely very good then we can put the cast away and our iron should be done as well so we can get that going in our pickaxe head beautiful lovely should be processing and i'm doing up a little bit of gold here because i also want to get a large plate cast as well um, for our system here but while we wait for the gold to finish well actually it's pretty much done but that's a different story altogether it doesn't take long to cook up gold but in the meantime let's upgrade our pickaxe oh my lord what is going on anyways not a big deal i'm making too big of a deal out of it it is what it is all right, so by upgrading, we are going to get additional mining speed. We are going to increase the durability as well as the attack. Okay, I am good with that upgrade. And we also get Magnetic 2. And Magnetic 2 is basically, it attracts nearby things that you hit. All right, so whatever you're mining and stuff like that, it's going to... Um, it's going to, you know, bring it towards you. Kind of like a small little magnet that you get. So, bingo. There is our first little upgrade. Our next one that I want to do is the copper tool rod on here. And what that's going to do is that's going to get rid of the fractured, which was the your tool's damage is increased, which for a pickaxe we don't really need. And we're going to get well established instead. And you gain additional XP. Very nice. So we're going to use that up. And that should be pretty much good for my pickaxe for quite some time anyways. So that's good. We will also want to get a hammer here right away. Um, I we need to upgrade the tool station though. And the tool station, the upgrade requires i think it's blocks of iron yeah blocks of iron or blocks of resource anyways i wonder could we do tin i think we actually have a decent amount of tin um steel gold brass tin huh we can do tin you know what we have a lot of tin let's do tin let's do this right now so boom we need four of these Good. Pull them all out. That's going to go like that. We're going to have them placed around there. And then we're also going to need three of the bricks. Like so. Across the top. And that should give us our upgraded tool forge made out of tin. Sweet. I don't think I've ever used tin for this, but why not? Okay. Awesome. So now we could actually make a hammer. Now, the hammer requires a lot of resources. That's the only downside to the hammer, is it does require eight for each of these, and then three for the rod itself. So that's eight, you know, 16, 24 total, and then the tool rod as well, um, which we don't even have the big, t the big tool rod 
in here yet or we don't even have a cast for it either so we need to get that done we need to get all the other resources that we're going to want for this thing i think i'm going to go with the copper handle again on the tool rod for this guy i think that makes the most sense overall so there we go we'll get that we'll make this cast i'm going to get some of the resources together for now that we're going to use all right so what i want to make the plates out of is steel we went with an iron hammerhead just for now that's more than enough for what we need and i want to go with these steel plates um i haven't tried them so we'll see how good they are you know steel is usually pretty good it does take additional resources to make steel so i'm thinking it's going to be pretty decent um I did look it up, and it doesn't quite have as much durability as slime, but it's still going to be pretty solid, I think, overall. It's still one of the better plates, I think, that are available to us. It also has this uh, ability called Sharp on it. And now, I'm not sure if that's going to make it really good for weapons or what, um, but we'll find out together here. I love how it shows up kind of in the order. I think that is so awesome of one of the one of changes of... 1.10 with Tinker's Construct. Absolutely phenomenal. So this is going to give us our hammer. Very good. Uh, let's bring it back to there. And let's see what this does. Hitting an enemy leaves them bleeding for a short time. Oh my. Well, that sounds pretty fun. Uh, attack of seven. Interesting. Okay. Uh, mining level of diamond, that's more than good enough for us at this point in time. Uh, we're just going to call it hammer, because I'm really inventive. And apparently we got the achievement time to strike. Excellent. Uh, so this guy's going to make for really good work in mining out some of these areas, especially when I go down to mine down below over here. Now, one of the things... Ow! Really? Have a hammer. How's that feel? Oh, I like that. Okay. That is pretty sweet. Okay. I really like that bleeding effect. We're going to have to use steel on some other thing, like on a weapon. That could be awesome. Okay. Sweet. I'm glad that that worked out. All right. So basically, that's going to help us out with mining and all that kind of stuff here until we get like a quarry or some sort of system up and running otherwise. Now, this pond here, I do want to use and I want to implement uh, something from a mod that I don't think I've ever seen or shown whatsoever. And it is called Water Strainer. And it's kind of a cool little mod, actually. I I like the idea of this mod and some of what it actually brings to the table. So we're going to need a little bit of iron because we're going to need at least a hopper, as far as I'm aware. And we're going to need two chests. All right, that's fine. Boom and boom. A little bit. It's not that bad. It's not really overly expensive or anything. But uh, it is going to be very, very useful, I think. Let's get you and you. And it's also going to help us a lot down here in our cave. Now, this is called the strainer base. This guy basically is going to go under the water. All right, so I left these kind of like the way I did. And as you can see, it places in accordingly. All right. And it looks good while doing it and all that kind of stuff. Now, we need to apply a strainer itself to this device. All right, so one of the first ones that we can do is a simple survivalist strainer. We can do a solid survivalist strainer, or we can do a reinforced strainer, which has about 13,000 uses, which is pretty darn crazy, but I don't have diamonds or obsidian at this point in time. Um, and then there's different levels of straining as well. So the survivalist strainer is like the basic general strainer. And when we look this up, it's showing that we have a 20% chance of getting a sand, 17% chance dirt, stick, cl gravel, clay, stone, oak wood planks, 
raw fish, and a 3% chance for a gold nugget. All right. If you go to a tight strainer, it's going to increase the small items. So now we have a 10% chance to get that gold nugget, a higher percent chance to get sand, dirt, and gravel. All right. And if you go loose, it's going to let through bigger items like sticks, clay, stone, planks, and fish. All right. I think I'm going to go with just the standard strainer for right now. I kind of want to play around and see exactly what they're like, if you know what I mean. I kind of want to experiment, and to be honest, I don't have enough string for the other side. So, actually, no, I'm not using the string one, am I? No, I'm not. Why would I do that? Silly, silly acrylic. Silly, silly man. All right, we are going to use the iron one because we have iron. That's no issue at all at this point in time. There we go. And that's going to have 1,080 uses to it. All right, so we click, we install the strainer, and voila. It should just start to work. Now, I'm not sure how... It updates pretty quick, actually. Like, that was pretty fast. So it's, it's updating somewhat occasionally, and it's just going to basically sit here passively with us doing literally nothing, wandering around in our base, you know, while this is all loaded, etc. And it's going to collect the goods. Pretty sweet, right? I think so. I think it's very sweet. And I hope you guys like it as well. Now, I wish there was a way to get additional things from it. Uh, for example, like some of the ores and stuff like that. Now, I'm not sure if there's a config setting that you can do for that. Or if there's, you know, something else that you can do for that. But I think it's pretty darn awesome. Anyways, um, we need five of you. Yeah, I think so. Voila. Another strainer base and another reinforced survivalist strainer. So anyways, I'm going to let these guys just continually collect us some resources. And yeah. Oh, you can just right click. Even better. I love it. I love the idea of the mod. The fact that we can just get resources and we can get them anywhere we are. So I think that is great. We got a hammer. We got a smeltery setup. We got ourselves some water strainers collecting us some resources. I think this is brilliant. I think we are good to go. And uh, I think that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, look at that. 28 wheat. Oh, baby. Love it. Good work, Wormy. Have a good one. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. If you are interested in joining the server, it, there is a link down below in the comments to become a Game Wisp or a Patreon subscriber to me, and that will get you access onto the server. Please don't hesitate. Come on, join the fun. Um, I'm going to iron out that TPS issue. That, that'll be gone. I guarantee that. And, uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you. And have a fantastic day.